Hi, my name is Jane Woodup, and this has been Pop Culture with Pat, and I play Laura Lee, and what are you going to do to stop me, coach? Hey, guys. Welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So really excited for today's episode on the show. Uh, we're going to be talking all things Yellow Jackets with Jane Woodup, who plays Laura Lee on the show. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really excited to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So, you know, to start things off, especially for, for guests, you know, first time, you know, being on the show, uh, before we get into the, the Yellow Jackets talk, uh, <laughs> I want to ask you, you know, what kind of, what got you started or interested in acting in the first place? And how did you just get, you know, started in general? Yeah, well, so I, it's kind of funny, because I, I never intended to want to do acting or even think about that. But when I, I was a uh, seven or eight my brother got very very into theater and at the time we lived in Tennessee and so he just got really into it and he went to go meet with an agent to be in like film and tv and stuff and he I didn't have a babysitter that day she canceled I dressed myself pretty sure I was wearing a tutu and I walked in and the guy was like oh I also want them like that's I want that look that look is great. And I dressed myself. Um, and the rest is kind of history. I just, I got my first um, project in a music video, a country music video in Nashville. And I loved it. And I just kept on saying to my mom, I want to do this. I want to keep doing this. And um, my brother eventually stopped doing it. Um, and so I just kind of kept doing it. And we moved out to LA um, so that both of us could continue to pursue acting but he unfortunately is not doing that anymore he's now a marine so oh. a bit of a different path <laughs> yeah no definitely well I mean talk about talk about just you know being right place right time I guess yeah truly it's it's I feel like a lot of my acting career has been very um serendipitous if that's a correct word for that <laughs> yeah no I mean but that, that's you know it's a really cool story so mm -hmm. And I know a lot of you guys, you know, watching, you know, the show afterwards, you guys are obviously going to know that, uh, you know, Jane is uh, on a current show that has become really popular recently uh, called Yellow Jackets. So, you know, can you just talk a little bit about what got you, you know, attracted to the show Yellow Jackets in the first place and, you know, the character of Laura Lee? Mm hmm well, I mean, when I first, I got the audition for it, and I think at first I was auditioning for Shauna at the time, um, and then I auditioned for Lottie and then Laura Lee, but when I first read the script, I was immediately in love with it. I just, I, most of the time when I have an audition, I will, you know, obviously read the script if I get the script, but this one, I just, I read it again, and I wanted to read it a third time, and I just didn't have the time, but I was so interested in the uh, comedic moments. That's what really, really drew me to it, and then when I auditioned for Laura Lee, it really did feel like a perfect fit for me because I, I think that to the outside perspective, her character can be very one note, but to me and my experience with Christianity that I've had. Um, I'm no longer a Christian, but just growing up in the church, it was a really welcoming environment for me. And so I really wanted to take that into her as a character and be able to show a Christian girl that wasn't, you know, constantly saying, oh, you're sinning. Oh, you're being bad. You know what I mean? And just loving everyone um, because that's what she's read about in the Bible. <laughs> Man, talk about what a difference it would have been, too, if you would have ended up getting uh, the character of Lottie instead of Laura Lou. I know, and it's so funny how I auditioned for both, and Lottie and Laura Lee, you know, have this dynamic. Um, it's it's so weird to me. And then especially when, like, the Reddit, the first episode had come out, I was immediately on Reddit, and they were saying, oh, Lottie, Laura Lee. And then on Twitter, it started to like become a ship. And I was like, how are you guys seeing this from the first episode? I didn't, I didn't see this when I read the first episode, but they immediately caught on. So that was pretty cool to see. Oh yeah. The fans have, have been, you know, great for the show from the get-go yeah. up on, on the details. Like I, I didn't get to start doing the uh, coverage as far as like the breakdown of the episodes till a little bit like later on in the show, but um, just some of the details that you know the fans have been able to to pick on 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 each episode and it's just like man like sorry like people mention stuff to me I'm like I completely missed that the first time around I'm gonna have to go back around and watch that you know again so yeah 
really dedicated fans but that's so yeah it's so interesting how you know again I guess just how things you know end up like turning out and I saw recently I read uh, an interview with uh, Melanie Linsky where she revealed that your character initially was supposed to you know just be in the pilot like your character you know was going to make it past the pilot and you ended up you know obviously you ended up making it much further so you can you just talk a little bit about you know what that whole journey was kind of like I had no clue that I was supposed to die in the pilot um I or like in like the second episode, you know, like when we come to, um, yeah, I had no, no clue that I, I was supposed to be dead in that until Ashley and Bart told me when they told me that I was actually dying, um, you know, later on. And so it, it was just, it was almost comedic to me because I loved that I didn't know, like I would have been so heartbroken and I got, it was kind of like the light at the, the, the end of the tunnel for me when in 2020 during the pandemic, I was like, okay, I know I've got yellow jackets and that's, I'm going to look forward to that. I'm going to Canada. I'm so excited. And, um, this was even before the show got picked up. I was just very like manifesting the show. Um, and I, I got a call and they were like, yeah, so you're coming to Canada. And I just, I didn't know. And then when Ashley and Bart told me, I was like, ah. I am so grateful. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, you guys really gave me nothing about this. That must have been. Uh, it might have. I feel like maybe, maybe it was done like on purpose. Because I mean, in a way, like I'm sure you could have, you know, still played the character like the same way. But maybe if you knew that the character wasn't going to oh, make it, like it, yeah. it changed things quite a bit. Yeah, and I also just love that about the show is they do have, you know a set what's going to happen in the season their plot points obviously but they do really you know look at how the characters interact with one another in terms of the actors and the dynamics and really take that into account in terms of where they're going to bring the characters um in line with what they have in their heads already so I really like that this show is able to do that and that that's kind of one of the reasons I was able to stick around yeah and you know, for myself, because uh, I'm a 90s kid, uh, so where Yellow Jackets, at least the timeline where Laura Lee, you know, is around, uh, takes place during the 90s, um, what kind of research did you do for the decade, and how did you just kind of, you know, prepare for this role overall? I mean, a lot of 90s music. I love 90s music, um, but I think I, I have my sister She's not technically my sister, but I call her my sister. She's a really good family friend. Um, she was a teenager in the 90s. She was very much like Nat, you know, smashing pumpkins and windows rolled down in the pickup truck. But she had a bunch of, you know, different types of friends. She was involved with a bunch of different friend groups. So I really leaned on her and I would talk to her about, you know, hey, did you ever have a friend that was like really kind of Christian? And she was like, oh yeah, like blah, 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 blah. Um, and so we got to talking about a couple of friends that she'd had and their personalities. And I just kind of like picked and shoot, like, you know, picked up different personality traits for these uh, Christian girls from her high school. But it, it definitely helped. And it brought me a lot closer to what this character would be thinking in terms of those, that day and that age and that time. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And, and one of my favorite things, you know, about Yellow Jackets too, is just that um, it really focuses on, you know, the relationships, you know, of the characters. So as we see, you know, during the first season, some of the relationships are broken, some, you know, <laughs> relationships are forged. Uh, could you just talk a little bit about, you know, the relationships of this cast, you know, behind the scenes and what it was just, you know, like working on the show? Um, do you have any favorite memories or stories just from you guys kind of like hanging out? I mean, we, we had a blast. We became a family pretty early on. We kind of knew that because when we came first came to Canada, everything was still in lockdown. You couldn't do anything. So we were the bubble that, you know, we were in. So we quickly just started to hang out with one another. Um, a favorite memory. I'm trying to think think there's like an unreleased TikTok video that all of us did which was pretty funny um but I think it was so fun to celebrate everybody's like birthdays like we had a couple of birthdays like Alexa's birthday was so much fun um and 
trying to think there's like it was so much there was so much that happened in the woods um All right. I imagine <laughs> I there I tend I have a stomach disease um and I tend to burp a lot and so that was kind of like the funny thing on set with me and if I was standing next to like one of the crew members that was like a big like muscly guy he would be like oh I'm sorry excuse me like when I let out a burp so that was pretty funny and everybody would like clap whenever I burped which was hilarious um but yeah I mean we all got we all got stomach issues <laughs> from yeah. time to time yeah. um but yeah so that was that was a funny moment and made me feel you know good about this thing that I'm can tend to be self-conscious about yeah. um so that was funny no, um, it seems like yeah, yeah. It's- you know yeah there was a, a lot I feel like it's all just like meshed into one memory in my head yeah no I mean but just like watching the show yeah you, you can you can definitely get the you know the chemistry between you guys you know so it definitely mm-hmm. across so you can you can see that I and you know talking to Kevin too he said that you guys you know had a lot a lot of fun like working on the show too and kind yeah. of doing your own thing so and especially off the show because um I took a trip trip with Kevin um Alexa who plays Mari and um Kia who plays Akila and we all went up to Whistler for like a weekend so that was great we all got to you know do our little excursions so it was it was really fun there you go no that that's exciting and mm-hmm. uh, you know you know fellow uh cast members and we kind of you know we touched on a little bit you know at the beginning of the the interview but um you know you got to work uh, quite a bit with Courtney Eaton uh you know as mm-hmm. far as and as Laura Lee and Lottie had a lot of, you know, quite a bit of like scenes together. So what was it like, you know, working with her on those, you know, different scenes? I I love Courtney. She, she brings a real presence to every scene and she makes everything look easy that she does. And it's quite beautiful to watch her work. She's just, she's fantastic and such an inspiration. Um, But yeah, she's very, helpful I would say you know like communicative which was really great we got to kind of like work back and forth about what we thought each character was thinking and how that related to one another and the dynamic that we were putting into the scene for example when we did the um, baptism scene we worked a lot on you know how they would approach one another how Larley would approach her and do that how they would hold each other's hands um, the looks that we were giving each other uh just a lot of things and so I think being able to have a a scene partner that is really communicative and willing and open um is really great and I definitely found that in Courtney and probably one of the best scene partners I've ever had yeah and just like the you know the parallels with like your your two characters too I thought Mm -hmm. you know was really interesting just the the journey that you know they ended up going on you know up until the point where you know you unfortunately left you know left the show um, but I just, yeah, I thought the the parallels of like kind of where your character was and where we see Lottie's character kind of going, you know, now in the direction that she's going, just ha- the parallels I thought were really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely, I I agree with that. I feel like I've seen the show like 10 times and every single time I see a different parallel between each character relationship that they have. It's, it's insane. And now for, you know, for you, I know you got, you know, quite a bit to, to pick from, but what was uh, your favorite Laura Lee moment and what was your favorite episode from season one and, and why did that one, you know, stick out to you? Favorite episode is eight, just because uh, it pushed me the most, I think, that I've ever been pushed as an actor. And um, I just really appreciated it. And I really appreciated being able to dive deep into my character and have that time to explore her um, I would say my favorite Larley moment, though, is um, the maple syrup tree line. I really liked that one. That was a good one. Um, yeah, and it's just such a Larley line. Like, of course, she's thinking about pancakes, you know? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, Laura Lee, she definitely became uh, a fan favorite, you know, on the show, for sure. A lot of, a lot of fans seem to really, you know, attach to that, you know, that character. So, and I knew, you know, I mean, at this point, we've, we've mentioned some stuff, you know, spoilers, but I knew <laughs> as soon as like I saw that your your character was getting ready to, you know, take flight in that plane, I was just like, oh, come on, like, we know this isn't going to end, you know, in a good way. And I was like, I didn't want to, you know, lose that character. So that, I mean, that was disappointing, but, you know, it had to happen as, you know, as far as like the story goes. 
Yeah. No, I definitely agree with that. There, it, It's sad, but it has to happen for chaos to ensue, essentially. She's like their one thing that's keeping them from total destruction. And you can see that in nine um, and 10 when they kicked Jackie out. Like a bunch of people were saying, oh, Jackie would have never gotten kicked out if Laura Lee had been there. And I completely agree with that. Um, Laura Lee would have been like, no, why, why are we kicking? It's cold. Let everybody needs to sleep inside. And so I, I think that it was definitely needed as sad and tragic as it is. Yeah, actually, I, that was kind of what I was going to ask you too. Like for you, I guess like, you know, personally, like what kind of effect do you think Laura Lee's death had on, you know, this group of characters, you know, moving forward? I mean, we don't know what obviously happens in season two, but moving mm-hmm. forward for these la- next couple episodes, like we see chaos begin to kind of like ensue things to kind of start, you know, like falling apart. And like you said, she's, she's kind of like the moral compass of the group. And now you know, she's gone. Yeah, I think that there, there's this one Reddit theory that, you know, ties in the supernatural element that I really like um where it's like Laura Lee was kind of the one thing that was able to stop or slow down that if there is a supernatural element you know the thing in the woods whatever that is that Lottie thinks that she sees or gets possessed by yeah whatever that is Laura Lee is almost able to stop it or slow it down so her death is kind of what invites it in full force um and so I really liked that theory because I was like yeah that that makes sense like she's kind of the only one with a bible and some sense of like you know opposite effect to this entity um so so yeah I thought that that was very interesting no 100% that's that's actually I haven't I haven't seen that theory but I mean yeah that that totally makes sense Mm because yeah shit kind of like really hits the fan you know (laughs) yeah you know just yeah so so that makes sense now, you know, it seems like you, uh, you have like a lot of similarities, you know, with like Laura Lee, it sounds like. Um, so I wanted to ask you, because I asked the same question to, uh, to Kevin too. Out of all the characters on the show, who do you think you would connect with the most as Jane Woodup out there instead of Laura Lee and why? Uh, definitely Natalie. Um, a big softy deep down but it has a little hard shell that you've got to crack. Um, and just, I think ultimately, like in that situation, I feel like I would be the one to kind of be like the moody, you know, brooding one in the corner. <laughs> be like, I don't want to be here. Um, maybe a mix of Jackie, I don't know. Um, but okay. I, I definitely think I also have a little bit of that Shauna because I would most definitely be writing out there I'd probably just be writing like something Natalie would write like some really dark poetry um so yeah just like in the opposite way you just got yeah no you just gotta you know get that out there so you gotta you gotta exactly you, could, you know, can relate to so that's that's yeah. pretty cool technically you know so we lose you but technically we do get to see your character um you know at the end of the show which I thought that yeah. was you know really cool um what was it like but as far as filming your last episode you know where your character dies you know can you just kind of break down what it was like you know filming that episode and and that you know scene like in particular um it was it was really great filming that episode I worked with um the director for that episode Ariel Kleiman and he is fantastic he we you know met before got to work through Laura Lee and what she as a character is um her thought process which was great um and then when we filmed the uh pool scene I did my own stunt for that so that is all me um and so that was really cool and he was very trusting of me to do that um (laughs) and then so filming the uh the plane stuff I I always like to mention this I was telling my my parents and my family this but when I'm looking out and there's like, you know, I'm a, no, I'm about to die. I've looked down at Leonard and I'm looking back up. I, my mom was like, what were you really looking at? Cause there's obviously, that's obviously not the sky. Like you're not looking at that. And I was like, no, I was looking at the um, back of Shauna and Jeff's bedroom from um, 
the older cast, like the like side half of like the set that they'd built. And I was like, yeah, that, I mean, that checks out, you know? And so I filming that scene was so fun, but so challenging because I was in this like little plane tra- contraption in this studio, but just having to like look out at nothing. Like, right. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And they put like, I think they put an LED screen at one point. I don't think it was a green screen, which was super, super oh. cool. Um, but yeah, for that, for that scene, I felt like everybody probably hated me because I didn't talk to anybody. I was like with my headphones, like dark and brooding. And then um when we were doing like the big, you know, emotional stuff that happens at the end, I I, we started everything, like started the fire and I still had my headphones in and they rolled sound and I was like, okay, take my headphones, you know? And that's how, kind of how we did it because I really needed to be in the zone and focused. Um, So I'm sure everybody hated me for that. But then afterwards I was like, thank you guys. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't pay attention to you. Um, but no, no yeah no they were very understanding but I was like I don't you guys know me you know this is the only time I do this um but it was it was a really great great scene and I'm really really happy with how it turned out I was a bit nervous not gonna lie because I'd never had a death scene I had never had a scene that went from such high emotion to such low like you know I'm gonna die it's the end and such a little amount of time and so that was a challenge but one that I accepted and I took on um, and I was happy to take on so that was that was a fantastic scene and I, I really loved the way it turned out yeah no it came out you know fantastic like I said I was I mean from as soon as I saw that you were going to be getting into the plane I was like damn it Lorley like you know you knew that was that was going to be it unfortunately but yeah I mean mm-hmm. the scene was you know amazing overall now Thank you. Because I know sometimes, um, like TV shows, yeah, mostly like TV shows. Uh, did you did you come back to film that little bit, like in the in the finale, or did you do the finale like beforehand? So, funny thing, um, I in Canada, I was living in an apartment for most of the time, and then, like, I learned that I was dying. And learned that it was my last episode, episode eight. And then they were like, oh, you're going to have to move out of your apartment. And so essentially I was like moving out of my apartment the last weekend that I was supposed to be in Canada, the last weekend that we were filming episode eight. And I just started like three classes for college. (laughs) So that was really fun. That was a great time. I had to move like all of my stuff down 26 flights of like or floors um all by myself and like loaded my car and then I went to an a hotel because the I first of all I didn't think that I was staying any later I thought that it would have worked out perfectly but also my landlord had like already rented my apartment without consulting me like without asking if I wanted to stay an extra month and I was like okay cool like thank you um not at like the busiest time that this whole year for sure um Yeah. And so I moved into a hotel and it was my last day of filming. I go in, I go into work. The next day I was planning on going back to LA, driving my car back down and I get into work. I'm in the middle of the scene and they're like, so we're going to have you in episode 10. So we can like, you can go back down or you can stay up here. Like it's up to you, you know, you'll be covered. And I was like, what, what am I going to do? And then I was like, it will be so much work for me to drive all the way down when I just started all these classes and do all of this other stuff that I had to do for other projects. I was like, I, I can't do this. I can't go back down. I can't go back and forth. And so I just decided to stay in Vancouver for an extra month and had a little hotel room to myself and just kind of skipped around in there (laughs) for um I think it was like two weeks because they were filming um episode nine so episode nine I was like just me myself in my apartment and I was every day after work I would text the group chat and be like hey guys did you finish work yet like you hang out want to come over because I was so bored um but it was a it was a great time and I really got to explore the city in that last month so that was a great a great experience 
well that's cool at least so at least you got to you know, yeah but yeah man wow talk about what a chaotic time I guess just from like going thinking it was going to be your last day on the show and then oh yeah hey by the way you're yeah for a little bit in the finale but yeah so as far as now I don't know if you've you know thought about this at all with you know the character let's say Laura Lee didn't try flying that plane and ended up surviving what would she be doing you know 25 years later now ah um I think all faith would be lost if she survived through the cannibalism I think that all faith would be lost like in my whole theory if Laura Lee did survive the flight she would have run out of gas and landed like somewhere near there and then just had to like trek back I don't think she would have made it back to civilization um so I definitely think her faith would have been lost if she did make it back to civilization she probably would have become a nun like I don't know she probably would have been like yeah this is this is I need to do this this is this was my purpose for God um so I'm gonna become a nun yeah I think that would that would definitely be where she would go but I think if she had had to survive through the cannibalism all faith would be lost I honestly imagine her homeless like not not doing well that would have been, yeah, I mean, that just like, you know, talking about that there, that would have been now, now, and I'm like, damn it, now I wish we, we got to see, like, Laura Lee as, you know, because <laughs> it would have just been so interesting to see, you know, the transformation, like, obviously, it'd be, you know, kind of sad to see where she's at, but just like you describing that, going from, you know, this character such pure of heart and, and faith and, and to end up kind of like that, you know, down the road, that would have been really interesting to see that, like, all kind of, you know, play out. Yeah. I completely agree, but you know, yeah, <laughs> maybe, no. maybe I'll whisper in Lottie's ear, you know, maybe that's how you guys will see me. <laughs> hey, I'll say, uh, you know, I, I didn't think we were going to see you. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see you in that, that last episode where, uh, you know, where you ended up showing up. So at first I was kind of like watching the finale. I was like, wait, like what is going on here? And then <laughs> see, you know, some of the characters I was like, oh, okay. And talk about that scene itself. That was super super creepy just you guys kind of like all like delivering that line yeah but we love you Jackie yeah I was just like whoa definitely getting some you know some horror vibes here for sure yeah yeah <laughs> and you know and actually you know speaking of uh so different genres uh horror is like one of my favorite things you know about the show like it isn't you know completely horror um, but it tackles several different genres, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, drama, a little bit of comedy mixed in, a little bit of horror, uh, you know, for you, which element do you enjoy most about the show? Definitely the horror. I love the getting to see how the blood and the guts get made and all of that type of stuff and being on the other side of it is so cool. I think that Yellow Jackets has definitely kind of ruined horror for me, movies for me, but that's okay. I'm completely fine with that. Um, because now when I look at horror movies, I'm just like, mm, that's fake. Yeah, I've seen that before. But everybody else around me will be so repulsed. I'm just like, guys, that's fake. Yeah. It's, that? like, it's like, it probably tastes sweet. Like that blood is like sweet and it stains your teeth. Like, you know, <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's, it's funny. And I definitely enjoy Horror. I've always been a big horror fan ever since my first horror movie that I saw, which was The Village by M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that was like, I think I watched that in like fourth grade and I was like, okay, love horror. Don't know why. Um, but I also really do enjoy comedy. And so I think that's why what really drew me to um, Yellow Jackets was that dark comedic um, tie in that they have. So I really do enjoy like horror comedy type, you know scenarios yeah. definitely enjoyed jasmine's latest movie scream that was a def a, a oh. really good <laughs> yeah yeah no I, i've seen i've seen the film myself scream i've seen it uh three times in theaters so far just because oh my gosh i'm a big big screen like the original scream is like one of my not only just like favorite like horror movies but i would say just like one of my favorite movies you know of all time i i agree that yeah I've seen that thing so it was yeah. really cool to to see. I mean, yeah, Jasmine absolutely killed it, you know, in the new screen. Um, it was so I cool. loved every scene. She was so funny. I loved her comedic timing. It was it was beautiful. And I think 
uh, being related to, uh, you know, as far as like the, the screen movie being related to Randy, because um, Randy was definitely one of my uh, favorite characters from like the original movie, just because I think yeah he was he was basically like the audience member. He was the the horror nerds or whatever, or, you know, just like mm-hmm. movie nerds in general. So that I, I love that, you know, whole aspect as far as like that goes. Now, and uh, we kind of mentioned it a little bit too, as far as uh, fan, uh, fan theories, you know, in general, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it sounds like you've definitely, you know, you've looked into, you know, some of them. So what have been some of your favorite or like wildest theories, I guess, that you've seen online? Um, a wild theory that I saw was when people, before people knew that Laura Lee, unfortunately, passed away, um, everybody thought that I was... Bianca that like Bianca was older Laura Lee um and I thought that that was a really interesting theory I did not think about that when I first saw that episode and saw that um so I thought that that was really cool I also really liked how they've you know the symbol they've really dug deep to try to figure out what this symbol means and my favorite theory on that is the fact if it's like 90s um graffiti um that people have like looked up um and they've found similar or similarities like one of them is the sign for man with gun lives here is very similar to the symbol in the show and so Mm. I really like how they've been able to kind of you know figure out try to dig deep into this sign because I would have never thought to think about that um so yeah that was really really interesting no not at all actually I, I haven't even I haven't even seen either one of those theories so that's, <laughs> that's really cool um yeah no I, I didn't even think of yeah Bianca being you know possibly like Laura Lee that's a really yeah cool connection and and in that in that you know when Jeff is walking out with Bianca she's in a like flowery navy dress so yep. people were like oh my god that's Laura Lee and it's like you know honestly I could see that now like obviously it's not but you know yeah no, that, that, that that's hilarious. Uh, to, you know, just kind of to wrap things up, you know, as far as, is there anything else that you wanted to say, you know, about the show, you know, Yellow Jackets, the fans, and just, uh, you know, where can people catch you next if, if there's anything that you can talk mm-hmm. about at this moment? There's not really anything I can talk about at this moment, but I will say that I'm very grateful for the Yellow Jackets fandom um, and all of the people that have supported the show. I think, you know, after a bit halfway through the season, it really picked up speed. And I'm really, really happy about that because it's a fantastic show with amazing, creative, talented people in every department. Um, And so I'm really glad that the show has gotten the love and support that it deserves. Yeah, no, I was, I was glad that you guys got, uh, you got picked up pretty Mm -hmm. well as far as like the second season. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, because you know, there's nothing, and I'm sure, you know, it goes both ways as far as there's nothing worse as like a fan, you get invested into a show and then it doesn't get picked up. But then obviously yeah. I'm like an actor too, it's like, you know, obviously you don't want you, the show to get canceled. So, I mean, seeing it was already picked up, but then um, I think it was not too long after that, I'd saw an interview or heard an interview where they had mentioned, it sounds like the writers, the creators, that they have like a five season plan for the show. Mm-hmm which that's really cool. So I hope we get to see, you know, that whole thing that kind of, you know, play out. And, and maybe uh, this isn't the last time that, you know, we've seen Laura Lee, you know, we obviously there's, <laughs> seems like there's a supernatural element. So uh, maybe hopefully you get to show up in the future. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you again, Jane. Uh, really appreciate Thank you for having me. Yeah, taking time out of your schedule to come on here. Uh, no, obviously you're busy. So really appreciate you coming on. Of course. Hi, my name is Jane Woodup, and this has been Pop Culture with Pat, and I play Laura Lee, and what are you going to do to stop me, coach?